Hey guys, thanks for joining us on another episode of Llama Life. I am Bo Beatty, and today we're going to go over how to transport your llamas and different trailers and transportation methods. So transporting your llamas is a really important part of packing them in the backcountry. And there's lots of different ways to transport llamas. When Kirsten and I first got started in llamas, I think I'd had them about four or five years. And uh, I sold three of them to pay for rent. <laughs> because we didn't have any money. We are going to school, trying to start a business, had llamas, and so I sold three llamas. A really wonderful lady came all the way out from California, bought a van in Idaho, and then we gutted the van with her, and then we put llamas in the van, and she transported them all the way back to California. So there's lots of different ways to transport llamas. Um, you can use vans, you can use trailers, you can use stock racks in the back of your truck. And we just kind of want to go over some of that today and talk about some of the safety and uh, different ways to do it. So right now, we got a Santa Fe trailer, Santa Fe 2, and this trailer is made by Trails West. And this is a two horse slant load trailer. And so traditionally, this, this trailer will hold two or three horses on a slant load. And the trailer is only six foot two inches wide on the inside. So this, the trailer width, if you have a trailer that's six foot wide on the inside, it'll almost fall right behind your tracks of your truck when you're going down a dirt road. And so the trailers can go all the way up to seven feet wide, sometimes even eight feet wide. But traditionally you'll see a six foot wide trailer, a six foot eight wide trailer, or a seven foot wide trailer. So this one's kind of in between. It's kind of an older trailer and it's six foot two. And I really, really like this trailer. It's probably one of my favorite trailers. And it has a tack room. So the tack room is where you can store all your gear and equipment. Um, and so you can see right here behind me, we've got a hay bale in here. We've got extra water, we've got buckets. We've got some pellets in here, a couple saddles it's got a place to store stuff. So this is a really awesome trailer for llamas. And I really like it because it's short and the tires are close to the back of the trailer. And so when you're going down that dip, it helps having the tires towards the back end of the trailer. And so the back end of the trailer doesn't drag as you come up and out of those dips. So when you're going and taking a trailer in the back country, think about, well, how many llamas am I, am I gonna take? Where am I gonna go? How am I gonna be traveling? And so this trailer is pretty ideal for up to four llamas. It's an awesome trailer. You can put all your llama gear in the tack room. It can stay nice and dry. It doesn't have to go on the back of the truck or suburban or whatever you're pulling with. And then you go through some pretty crazy country. Now this trailer, what we did is um, you, we flipped around the axles. Uh, my friend Bob Potter did that. Flipped around the axles. And then we've got big old tires here. And so these are 18 ply tilers used for um, small semi trailers and things like that. And we still have quite a bit of clearance between the bumper and the tire. And so when you do something like this, kind of a custom um, change on a trailer, you got to really consider how much space you have between your tire and your fender because when you get rocks and snow or mud and it builds up, the more clearance you have, the safer you are. And then also the distance right here between the tires. When you get bigger tires, obviously the circumference gets bigger and they'll start getting closer together. Then it's really easy for smaller rocks to get wedged in that space, and that's a really scary spot to be in. And so, when you're doing something like that, um, trying to do some custom work on a trailer to make it fit your needs better, something to take in consideration is, is to watch out for spacing between your axle, your tires, and your uh, um, whatever this is called. This nice, pretty fender. Okay, another little custom piece that we uh, have done to this trailer, and quite a few of our other trailers, is backup lights. So a lot of times when you're hiking or camping or going, taking your llamas in the back country or even coming home after a trip, it's almost dark. It's a lot of times dark. And so having these backup lights, every time you throw that vehicle in reverse, they shine out and then you can kind of see when you're backing up where you want to direct that trailer. So I highly recommend it. They're really, relatively inexpensive. Um, you can buy them pretty much anywhere online. And these are LED lights. So I highly recommend it. So this is a horse trailer. And you can tell it's a horse trailer, mostly by the way, well, because it's got a little horse logo on it, but see how this door swings? It's one big solid door. That's very typical of horse trailers. There's stock trailers, there's horse trailers, there's stock combo trailers, there's small livestock trailers. And the different names that the trailer have, usually you can see by the, if they have a tack room and then the door dimensions and shapes and styles will vary significantly. So this is a horse trailer, so it has one big door, and it's tough to get the llamas in there because when you take your llamas in there, they want to come out if the door's open, obviously. And so you kind of have to hold the door shut and sneak them in there one at a time if you're going to let them loose. So you hold the door like that, put one in, put the next one in, put the next one in. 
And when you're traveling, the llamas will lay down in the trailer. And so you don't want to tie them up. So what you might do when you have a door like this is take, put all your llamas in there, tie them up to the post on the sides, and then shut your door and then take all their lead ropes off so then they can kind of roam around free without being tied to the trailer. So that's typically what I like to do. Um, the other trailer methods that I, or trailer doors that I like are the stock combos and they have a slider. It makes it a lot easier to put them in there and uh, take the lead rope off as you're putting them in. So this is one method and, or one style of trailer that we really like. It's really good for four llamas, not much more than that. And uh, we like to bed when we're going into places. So we'll put, you know, four or six inches of hay in the back of the trailer. It's really important if you're going into uh, public lands, Forest Service, BLM, national parks, that you actually have weed-free hay. And so you put, we'll put weed-free hay down on the bottom and then you'll see the hay nets. We always usually have two hay nets in each of the trailers so llamas can eat as they're being transported. And I think that's a really important component, especially when you're working the llamas really hard. It just gives them a little more time to get a little more calories into them before and after trips. So um, the hay nets are really important, I think, to have, and bedding heavy. But one of the things about, for example, Yellowstone National Park is you can't actually have bedding in your trailer when you enter the park. And so you can't have any of the bedding down there. You have to have a totally clean trailer, as clean as you can from poop. You know, the llamas are gonna poop in pee in a, a little bit as you travel, but you can't be bedding anything. And when you don't bed stuff, what happens is that rubber mats that are usually down on the trailers, and if they poop and pee on it, or if it's bad weather and it's wet, it gets really slick. It becomes unsafe for the llamas. So it's a fine balance, you know, there of being unsafe for the llamas and following the rules and regulations. So we just try to do our very, very best with that. And so an important, I guess, pro tip would be when you're going into different states and different uh, public land um, areas and regions that are managed by Forest Service, BLM, state, and uh, the Department of the Interior, such as Yellowstone National Park, really important to know what you can and can't do. And I think a rule of thumb is to always have bedding, and if you are gonna have bedding, to have um, weed-free certified hay. So, or straw. So this is one trailer, I really like it. It's uh, Charles West Santa Fe 2 with some custom uh, lights and uh, flipped axles and larger tires. So I'll show you the hay net, and then we'll go in the back and show you guys a few different models of trailers and why we like each one of them and hopefully it's helpful to you. Here's the hay nets. You can get these from all different places. I'll send you, put a link in the description for you guys where we buy these online. We're just feeding a, a variety of grass hay that we grow here at the ranch that we had uh, weed free certified. And so usually we have two, net, two nets in each trailer. This trailer's a little bit smaller so we only have one. And you just tie this little baby up here I'm just doing a couple half hitches. And this llamas will sit here and feed through this thing pretty slowly. And so we'll just kind of pick through it and uh, kind of saves speed. And there's a great way for llamas to travel long or short distances and uh, keeps them entertained when they're back here. They also might fight a little bit. And when they do, you're gonna see, <laughs> see this all around here. Our llamas uh, obviously get in here and fight a little bit and spit. So we usually clean out the trailers and scrub them all down twice a year, but Right after you scrub them down, then look just like that on your next trip. <laughs> That's part of llama life. Okay, this is another trailer that we use quite often. This is made by Titan, and I think they make some of the best trailers out there. And this is a, a metal trailer. It's the Challenger model, and this is called a stock trailer or a stock combo. And so the things I really like about this is it has multiple doors, has a sliding door, and has a middle divider. So right here on the side, if you want to get your llamas out this way, boom, you can take your llamas out this way, no problem. So I really like having that side door. It becomes really, really handy. And this trailer is a 16 foot long and is six foot, eight inches wide. And so with this trailer, ideally 10 llamas is perfect. Um, anything less than that's obviously nice and easy and lots of room. You can put 12 llamas in here depending on the size of the animals. And again, when you're hauling llamas, you just let them in here just kind of free, you know, not tied up. They're just roaming about doing their thing. That's the safest way to transport them as they kind of want to lay down and move back and forth a little bit. And then having nice gaps here at the top of the trailer is great because your llamas get a see, they get plenty of ventilation. And, uh, and then having a sawed wall like this is huge because when you're traveling down the road, 
it's muddy, it's rainy, it's snowy, and then the wind's blowing really hard, this kind of protects them. So this is a trailer that's great for protecting your llamas. And these spots right here are designed perfectly on these Titan Challenger trailers for you to put in a plexiglass to be able to close this all off. You can close the bottom section and the top section or one or the other. So on really, really, you know, bad weather days or in the winter time, if you're gonna transport a lot of livestock, it might be worth having those plexiglasses put in. Pretty inexpensive and then keeps almost your lumps totally enclosed and out of uh, harms and weather's way. So these trailers, one thing I like about these trailers a lot is usually when you buy a brand new trailer, they don't come with mats and they don't come with a spare tire, <laughs> which drives me crazy. So these trailers come with spare tire, they come with mats, especially if you buy them from Bear Lake Trailer Sales. And they have a couple different locations here in the West. So highly recommend uh, Bear Lake Trailer Sales. Give Jordan a call. And then uh, these trailers come, like I said, with mats and a tire. And they all come with LED lights. So a lot of trailers don't come with LED lights. And I really like the LED lights because they're easier to replace. You need to replace them. They're brighter and smaller. And uh, they stick on better as far as the component and how they sit into the trailer. So they're just less likely to come off or fade or break or all that stuff. We just have so many problems with trailer lights that I really like the LED lights. And the smaller the light, the powerful they are, the easier they work with. And the last thing these guys have come with torsion axles versus spring axles. And so when you're hauling a lot of weight, going up and down roads and have a lot of different changing in topography, having those torsion axles is huge. So I really, really recommend the torsion axles no matter what trailer brand you get, if you can get them. And if you don't get the torsion axles, I recommend flipping the axles and putting bigger, um, higher grade tires on there that are a heavier ply. And I think you'll be better suited for hauling off-road in the back country. So these Challenger trailers come in all different dimensions. You can get them six, eight wide, six foot wide, 12 foot long, 14, 16, or a custom build, um, all up to 18 or 20 feet. So this is a bumper pole. This is about as big as I think you should go with the bumper pole. And this is a great trailer. The last feature that I really like about it is that it has the divider gate in the middle and then the slider door in the back. So let's go take a look at those. We went and put some LED lights, backup lights on this. It's a little bit bigger and the frame to put the lights on is a little bit bigger. So we're able to put uh, longer, taller, um, more uh, lumen lights. So you can do it yourself. You can cut this out, put it in there, run your wires to your power source, ground it and away you go. So, or you can have someone do it. If you guys live in Idaho, highly recommend Mr. Driveline out of Manan, Idaho. He does a great job. His name's Levi. Man, guy knows how to fix and do anything, small projects. So I really like this trailer because you have two options. You can open up the door in its entirety, and then it has a center divider, and you can actually lock, you can lock the center divider here, Another feature that I really like is the sliding door, and I use this most of the time when putting llama in and out of the trailer. And the reason is because you can go in, shut it, and then do what you need to do, or you can put a llama in, let them jump into the trailer while you're still outside of the trailer, clip their lead off, and then shut the door. So I really like the sliding feature. It makes it really, really convenient for loading llamas and unloading llamas. So highly recommend this brand and style of trailer. Again, they call this trailer a stock trailer or a stock combo. So when you're looking for trailers, looking for a stock combo, will help you get a trailer that uh, structurally looks like this, that has a sliding door in the back versus kind of a big swinging gate, and that's it. So this is trailer number two that we really like to use, and it's been great for us in the back country. So this is 2007 Tundra, and it's got a pretty thin uh, connection here on the hitch, of, but the 2011 Duramax we have is thick. And so having a big um, a connector here on the end, it's really important. So they just go like that. When you're connecting your trailers, always cross the chains. And the reason why you want to cross the chains is if this hitch somehow falls, pops off, comes unlocked or whatever, by having the chains cross like that, it'll catch the trailer when, uh, when the trailer hitch falls, it'll catch it down here. And so I have seen this firsthand. It's happened to me once. And the only reason why it happened is because I forgot to lock the trailer. So it just happens. So to be safe, I always try to cross those and I always try to lock the trailer, even though I forgot one time and it actually did come off and there were no llamas in it. So that was good. So now we're going to go into uh, one of my favorite ways to transport llamas and that's in a stock rack. 
This is stock rack. What that means is you put stock livestock in the back of this inside of this. And so this stock rack right here will slide right into the back of your pickup bed. And obviously lots of different models and sizes of pickup beds. We have pickup beds that go inside of 07, 08 Tundras. Um, they go inside of six foot beds, eight foot beds, six and a half foot beds. Now you notice as you go into like Tundra, Ford, Chevy, Dodge, Nissan, whatever, the bed uh, widths also change. And then the, the, the tallness uh, and the height of the bed itself is different. And so we have about eight different models that we have here at the ranch depending upon um, your bed size. And so if you're going to be renting llamas from us, this is one really great option. You can rent them for $25 a day. And uh, we, when you rent a stock rack, we'll include the stock rack. We'll include a mat that goes in the back of your truck bed to kind of protect your truck bed. And they also include a hitch rack. And so that will go in the, in, into the hitch of your truck to allow you more storage space. So we're going to go ahead and pull this down so you kind of get an idea of what it looks like. Um, and then we'll go ahead and throw it in the truck so you guys can kind of see it in person. Okay, so this is what the stock rack looks like. We've got 60 inches tall right here. And then we've built a, a cross member frame over the top and that's to help from the door sliding back and forth when you try to tighten it. And this goes over the cab. And so, pretty cool feature to have. You can store a lot of gear and equipment. This stock will fit two or three llamas, depending upon the size of the llamas, but almost always two and sometimes three, especially if you're not going far away. So you can put all your gear in here. So let me show you guys how this works. So when you're storing these, I like to set them on the back side. And the reason is, is because then all the uh, weather will fall off of it, but mostly because then it becomes really easy to hook up to these when uh, you're by yourself and you need to tip them into your bed. So we'll show you how to tip them into your bed and load them by yourself a little bit later. So pretty simple, we've got three hinges on that side. One of the important pieces is making sure that the door is a couple inches, three or four inches off the, um, off the ground floor, which will eventually be your truck bed. The reason is, is because usually tailgates, they connect, say right here's where they hinge, and they kind of they kind of come up. And so if you've got any gear and equipment or a mat on there, it needs to be high enough the door needs to be high enough that it won't hit your tailgate. And then you load your llamas in here. So when you're loading, your, loading this into your truck, I have, we have these D-rings in four places. And usually this, is, this truck is made for 2010 all the way up to 2016 Duramaxes. And a lot of times this will fit in a lot of the Ford trucks as well. And so we have uh, turnbuckles that go on each side and this thing will become 100% sturdy. It won't even move, not even an inch, so when it's all tight and set up. And you see that we do got some heavy duty expanded metal on the sides. And the reason why we did expanded metal versus bars is because when you get going, if you get in the back road and your llama stands up, and you're starting to feel their truck bed sway, we don't want their foot to go outside and go out through. If we just had bars, it'd be easy for them to poke through. And then you can also haul wood, anything you want into in here. And this expanded metal is kind of just the way to go in my mind. So that's why we chose to do it. It's more of a safety issue than anything. Um, and one of my favorite features is how this works. So we've got all of our, our storage space up here. This is, everything will be over the cab. And this is how we unlock this little puppy. All right. So now it becomes, becomes pretty easy to put all of our gear. So you can put all of one llama's gear, saddle, buckets, panniers, Everything you need to pack a llama. One llama can go right here. Another llama's gear will go right here. And then you have a third left of space and if, that's, if you want to store stuff. It'd be a perfect spot for a cooler. So we made these to go in full, to, to fit full size coolers, length and dimension. So this is, just, this is kind of our last design. It's my favorite design. And uh, all the rest of them that we build from here on out are like this. We sell a couple of these a year. So if you're interested in buying one, just let us know. We can send you. Um, some are prints and dimensions or we can build you one. Um, this is powder coated, highly recommend that. So this is a stock rack, easy to fit two llamas, sometimes three. So we're gonna go ahead and throw this into the truck, load some llamas up into this baby. So here we got a llama named Sue. He's actually a boy. 
He's a three-year-old and uh, he's an outcross, so he's not related to any llama we own, crazy or not. He's just a three-year-old, so he's gonna get to breed a lot of uh, a lot of girls in his day, I'm afraid. But he does not have the greatest manners, so we're gonna teach him how to get in the back of uh, the pickup truck. Hey, silly. We just picked him up uh, about six months ago. A llama named Sue, going in the back of the stock rack. Come on, get that back end in here. Good boy. Okay guys, so we just got llama named Sue in the back of the truck, and this is how to transport your llamas in a stock rack. We could only fit about one more big guy like this in here, and uh, two big llamas is about as much as you're gonna get in a stock rack unless you have an eight foot bed. So this is just a even shorter, it's like a five foot three bed. So it's pretty dang short. Um, Sue here is um, 50 inches to the shoulder, so he's a pretty big boy. He's crapped down pretty good right now, but you can see there's only enough space basically for one more llama in here. And uh, they travel pretty good. I don't like to travel long distances in stock racks. Three hours in good weather is about as much as I would do. If you're going longer than that, you need to kind of board up the inside, keep the wind out of their eyes and ears, and uh, hopefully keep the moisture out as well. So stock racks are pretty good tool, especially if you're traveling three or less hours and uh, good weather conditions. I really like it. You can get a pickup, wherever you can get a pickup truck and get your llamas back in there. So it's a great backcountry way of transporting these working guys. Thanks for uh, watching the video today. We really appreciate it. Click on our other videos and subscribe.